Welcome to the graduates of the class of 2023, families and friends. Please join me in thanking the Plum Blossom String Quartet, which has provided our musical entertainment. Please also join me in thanking everyone who has worked for weeks and months to make this day so special. It takes a village to do this, and we are lucky to have such a village. So I look out at all of you graduates, and what I feel is pride. I am beaming with it. So are all your family and friends here to see you graduate today the faculty and staff of the law school who have watched you grow from one else not sure of what a tort is into lawyers. They are beaming with it. I hope you all feel the pride for you today. I hope you appreciate it. I hope you bask in it. And I know that you appreciate the support of all of these folks, your families, your friends, the faculty, the staff, your mentors, your counselors, your, your, your professors, all that they have offered you over the past three years. So please join me in thanking them with a round of applause. I hope that you are proud of yourselves. You should be especially you, the class of 2023. You are, as you well know, the law school's most COVID-affected class. I didn't really know how else to put that. <laughs> you entered law school at the height of the pandemic, and you had to abide by some pretty challenging and frustrating protocols and rules. You had to take remote and hybrid classes. You had to socialize in groups of five or 10, rather than our usual 30. You had to mask and social distance. You had to attend outdoor office hours, outdoor meetings, outdoor events, outdoor breakfast with me, in all sorts of weather. You got very good at the scarves and the jackets in those meetings. And most importantly, you had to take care of your own health, physical and mental, and the health of your loved ones. And you experienced losses big and small. Beyond the pandemic, this has been a hard time for our nation and our world. You all faced polarized politics and contentious elections, war abroad and violence far and tragically earlier this year, very, very near. We salute you for your resilience and your grit, and we salute you with the generosity of spirit and support you showed for one another. It really feels like a gift to be here today with a regular graduation in this place, on this lawn, with your friends and your families. And I will note, with this weather, this is the best weather I have seen in 21 years of UVA graduations. And you know, you know that we have been trying to make this post-COVID time special for you, the class of 2023, and I'm glad that the weather got my memo. <laughs> We are here to salute you, not only for the extraordinary accomplishments that you achieved during this extraordinary time, but also for all of the usual law school accomplishments that you did along the way. Law school is never easy. In fact, law school is legendarily difficult. It is rigorous and intense. It's in movies and books, a book we'll hear about 
later. Uh, law school is really, really hard, and we could not be more proud of you for coming here and doing what you came here to do, become lawyers, leaders, and holders of a public trust. The law is a learned profession. It requires, according to longstanding definition, extensive learning or erudition. I told you that the first day we spoke at orientation. And in fact, that is what you have been doing over the past three years, both inside and outside of the classroom. You immersed yourself in this complex new field, reading cases, answering cold calls, taking exams for our students from abroad. That also included doing all of that often in a second or third or fourth language. You spent hundreds of hours in clinics externships, moot courts, pro bono projects, and mock trials. You have led conferences, symposia, events, and award-winning student organizations. You have earned those highbrow words, learned and erudite. And indeed, you have done even more of that. Because the profession of law is not only learned, it is also noble. And I know that it might sound hokey, the noble and learned profession of the law, but if you can't be hokey at graduation, I don't know when you can be hokey, and I also think it is true. At our best, we couple the learning of the law with a commitment to high ideals, to the rule of law as a superior means of dispute resolution, to advancing justice and equality. Joining a noble and learned profession means accepting and holding a public trust, to give as well as gain from your professional standing, and to pursue careers and make choices with integrity, judgment, and humanity. You have already begun to discharge that public trust here in Charlottesville, in the Commonwealth, and everywhere as far away as South Africa. You collectively logged over 12,000 hours in pro bono service, with 82 of you meeting our pro bono challenge, supporting victims of domestic violence, local first responders, and LGBTQ plus youth. You have worked on behalf of Ukraine victims of the Russian-led invasion of Ukraine, and you have helped Virginians avoid eviction. You have done all of that and more with characteristic energy, with concern for what is right, and with the aspirations of a public-spirited profession dedicated to, the pro dedicated to the productive exchange of ideas, and with the determina ter determination not only to finishing what you began and overcoming the obstacles set before you, but ultimately to finding joy and friendship in the process. So when I say that today is about our pride for you, I mean that we are proud of what you have learned, of the accomplishments that we can count and tout on our website, and the accomplishments you put on your resumes, and we are also proud of who you are as UVA lawyers. It is such a proud moment for me now to introduce Juhi Desai, who knows how to make an entrance, <laughs> the president of the Student Bar Association. And Juhi will offer some remarks and introduce today's speaker. Prior to attending law school, Juhi graduated from the University of Rochester, where she majored in political science. She then taught world history, advanced placement United States history, and civics and economics at the Pioneer Charter School of Science in Saugus, Massachusetts. She subsequently served in the Peace Corps for two years, teaching English and math to primary school students in Josini, South Africa. In addition to her role as SBA president, Juhi has served in several, leader posi several leadership positions at the law school, including vice president of the first year council, co-chair of admitted students open house, school solicitations director for the public interest law association, director of communications for the American Constitution Society, and director of outreach for the law and public service program. She was also selected to be a peer advisor and a Virginia law ambassador. If you are thinking right now, that it must take a lot of energy to do that, you would be right. <laughs> Juhi has that much energy and more, and we have all been so fortunate that she has dedicated her energy to this community for the last few years. It is also with great pride that I tell you that following graduation, Juhi will continue her record of public service, joining the juvenile rights practice of the Legal Aid Society in New York City, representing her clients as a staff attorney. Please welcome Juhi Desai. <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, thank you so much, Dean Golubov, for the introduction. I have really appreciated working with you um, and the rest of the administration over this last year. And I am so grateful for the work that you all do, because as it turns out, trying to make 900 law students happy is kind of a challenging endeavor. <laughs> I also want to thank all of the professors who are here today. I know I speak for many of us in the class of 23 when I say that the faculty at UVA Law is a very special faculty. And we are so grateful that you have taken the time to nurture our ideas and our dreams over these last three years. Thank you too to the staff in the crowd, particularly Mandy, Miss Joanne, and the rest of the, yeah, they rock, and the SCOCO dining hall team who kept us fed and heavily caffeinated, as well as facility staff who kept the building clean and comfortable for us. We could not have done it without y'all, and your work does not go unnoticed or unappreciated. And finally, I extend, Finally, I extend my deepest gratitude to the family and friends whose care and support has carried us to this day. Today's celebration is a testament to the enduring power of love, and we are so happy to share this accomplishment with all of you. So to the class of 2023, congratulations. I, <laughs> yes, we made it. I know that this journey wasn't always easy. In fact, at times it was downright treacherous, but through individual grit and perseverance, as well as collective community support and encouragement, we made it to this day, and what a momentous day it is. In writing this speech, I spent a lot of time reflecting on these last three years, trying to pick out themes that I felt captured the experience. I thought a lot about how we started, furiously avoiding eye contact and spitting in tubes in the parking lot of Park Six, <laughs> to how we ended furiously avoiding eye contact and staring at our phones as we passed someone we vaguely knew in the hallway. In my reflections, I realized that for all the law I learned, I also learned a lot about some other things. The human capacity for redemption, the transformative and liberating power of love, and the importance of embracing duality. Duality. Duality is the idea that at any given time, two seemingly contradictory things can be true. We entered law school at what can only be described as a tense socio-political moment. The pandemic was ramping up, we were approaching a contentious national election, and we were coming off a summer of some of the largest racial justice demonstrations in American history. Those days were tough. We were encouraged to distance and divide, which unsurprisingly is a recipe for disconnection, and we were learning the law just as the law's painful shortcomings were being revealed. All of this is the truth of our first year. but. It's also true that ultimately, we respected dis distancing and protocol out of care for our community, knowing that our individual actions played an important role in the health of the collective. While it was a bummer to miss out on the large group hangouts that generally make up the first year, that time spent in small groups is some of the best time I spent in law school. It was in those moments that we learned each other's hearts and laid the foundations for relationships that would ultimately get us through some of the most difficult moments of the last three years. And no, Zoom wasn't the most fun experience. But as many of you know, I am the absolute last person to complain about having the opportunity to take contracts from bed on a rainy day or on a sunny day. Sorry to Professor Cordana. <laughs> My point is, it was hard that, that first year, but it was also joyous, humorous, and exciting. 90s hip hop artists Q-Tip and Rafael Sadiq once sang, we fight, we love. Yes, we do. So too do we rise and do we fall. We grieve, we rejoice. We stay apart, we come together. Who knows that journey better than the class of 2023? What I learned in law school is that duality is humanity. No experience or idea or person, including ourselves, will ever be fully anything. Everything we interact with exists on a spectrum, capable of both healing and harming, of building and destroying. And I know that can seem like a scary recognition, but it's actually quite beautiful. If infinite possibilities exist within us, all of us, then what really matters is what we choose to do. Our lives are going to be filled with decision points. We'll make choices about what cases to take on, what policies to advocate for, but just as importantly, we'll make choices about who we let into our life and how we care for those people. We'll choose whether we stand up for ourselves and others, as well as whether we commit ourselves to honesty, integrity, accountability, and growth. Know that whether you end up on the federal bench or leave the law one day to go work in hostels in Europe, this is me manifesting that for myself, <laughs> your choices will matter. Because as far as I see it, um, the history of the world is nothing more than the aggregate of individual actions, thoughts, ideas, and people. 
So know that you are going to change the world. We all are. The question is, how will we do it? Will we be afraid to live authentically, accept the status quo as so, defeated before we even begin to fight? Or will we act with intent, with courage, with love of humanity as your guiding value? As you make the choices that will eventually come to define your life, don't be afraid to choose unconventionally. Honestly, I look back on the last three years and there are some things I'm like, yeah, I would have probably done that differently now. Um, but it was in those moments where I learned the most about my true values, motivations, desires, and fears. Deviating from the path prescribed gave me a look into the complexity of my own character and spirit, and that awareness granted me the opportunity to live a more aligned and authentic life. All to say, be a little weird. Take a few risks. Be true to you. You deserve that. And if you make some mistakes along the way, learn the lesson that needs to be learned and keep it moving. If you get stuck in your failures, you won't get very far. And if you don't want to take my word for, it, word for it, just take the history of the world as proof. For as long as humans have existed, they've made the unthinkable reality and the unconventional convention. In our lifetimes alone, we've watched the boom of technology completely change the societal and legal landscapes. And over generations, we've seen as one person's crazy idea has resulted in far-reaching innovation, transforming the world as we know it. The world is not stagnant. It never has been. It's open to change if we are. I truly believe that our imagination is the greatest gift the universe granted humanity. Lean into it and know that what you can imagine can be. It probably just takes a little commitment, determination, and maybe some love and community to make it come to life. Okay, so finally, I do need to talk about power. As lawyers, we get a lot of it, and I believe that it will be our life's responsibility to wield it carefully and humanely. We are graduating into a world where power is distributed incredibly unevenly, and unfortunately, there are groups of people fighting pretty hard to keep it that way. We won't be able to fix it all. But as law graduates, particularly as law graduates from UVA, we have the education and the opportunity to improve our systems and our world even just a little bit. So find your cause and commit yourself to it because the world could certainly use the advocacy skills and the passion that I know exists in this class. So before I hand off the mic to our incredible commencement speaker, I just want to thank this class for believing in me. I imagine it was pretty annoying when I made SBA my entire personality, <laughs> but the truth is I really just needed something to throw my heart into, and I'm grateful to have been given this opportunity. I want you all to know that I believe in you too. Over the last three years, I have watched this class do some truly incredible things from writing groundbreaking legal scholarship, to crafting and nurturing community programs to help the formerly incarcerated in Charlottesville, to overcoming grief and part personal hardship with grace and resilience. This class has undoubtedly left its impact on the school and the community. I feel so lucky to have gotten to know so many of you and to have seen the creativity, the passion, the curiosity, tenacity, and grit that exists in all of you. Thank you for teaching me what it means to be a truly loving person. As wild as it sounds, it was here where I learned what genuine care, compassion, and friendship looks like. So I'll leave you with this quote inspired by the Talmud, which is a book of Jewish religious ideology. It goes, do not be overwhelmed by the enormity of the world's grief. Do justly now. Love mercy now. Walk humbly now. Ultimately, I say just do what you can do in your little corner of the world and trust that those efforts matter, because they do. I know the challenges are big, but we are up for the task. So go be great, and don't forget to do good. I am cheering you on, and I look forward to the day many of us meet again, which honestly is probably gonna be Monday in Skoko, because now we have to study for the bar. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, um, It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce our wonderful commencement speaker, Ms. Helen Wan. Ms. Wan is a 1998 graduate of the University of Virginia School of Law. After graduating from UVA Law, Ms. Wan spent a year and a half at a major New York City law firm before leaving for a smaller firm to focus on media and entertainment law. She eventually worked as in-house for three media companies and served as the vice president and associate general counsel for the Hatchet Book Group. Today, Ms. Wan is a lawyer, diversity, equity, and inclusion consultant, go off, speaker, and the author of the novel, The Partner Track, which was turned into a Netflix series last year. I'm very excited to hear from Ms. Wan today, who I am confident offers thought-provoking and wise insights into the legal field and society generally. Thank you so much for joining us, Ms. Wan.
Well, hello, class of 2023. It's great to see all of your um, beautiful faces out there in person. And thank you so much, Jeannie. That was great. So, distinguished faculty, family members, friends, it is such an honor and a joy to be back in Charlottesville today um, addressing all of you on, and celebrating this wonderful occasion on such a gorgeous day. And, and I truly thank you all for the warm welcome that I've received. I want you all to know that it really is a particularly special honor for me to be standing up here as your graduation speaker because it literally was exactly 25 years ago this weekend that I was sitting exactly where you are graduating from this very law school. So being invited to uh, back to stand here at this podium and address you on this great occasion feels a bit surreal to me, honestly. It feels a little bit like a, uh, one of those magical, you know, Cinderella at the ball moments that sometimes do happen in a life. If 25 years ago, any of you tried to tell me that you had a secret crystal ball and that one day my random subway scribblings as I commuted back and forth to my very first law job in New York uh, would be one day published as a novel called The Partner Track, which would then be taught in colleges and, you know, and law schools, including this law school, uh, in a seminar in ethical values, um, and would be dubbed the, the Big Law Bible um, before eventually becoming a TV series on Netflix, well, I don't really think that I would have believed it myself. A lot of people have asked me, what it's like to be a lawyer turned author with a TV show? And how I mapped out this path for myself. <laughs> I, I truly appreciate this question, but also it does kind of make me giggle because uh, no one has been more surprised by this crazy roller coaster ride than I have. Um, and I can tell you in all honesty that this journey so far has been marked so much more by serendipity than by any actual plotting or design on my part. But as you know, um, hindsight is always 2020, right? So I may not have understood this when I was sitting where you are graduating from this law school 25 years ago, um, but now I do know that I was very fortunate actually that my career path after graduation has not always been linear and did take some unexpected twists and turns and that all of that is perfectly okay. <laughs> so as a law student here um, and as a new lawyer in New York, I didn't always recognize some bumps in the road for what they were, which were opp opportunities. I'm now extremely glad that I took a couple of risks along the way, educated risks, mind you, I'm still a very risk averse person, um, and that I did take the road less traveled at least some of the time. So whenever people ask me, what has been the most surprising aspect of your career journey since graduating from UVA Law School? Well, the answer is all of it. <laughs> um, yet at the same time, I'm a very strong believer in making your own luck. And what I mean by that is that yes, serendipity, being in the right place at the right time or meeting the right um, human being who somehow brings uh, a lot of joy or, or meaning or change to your life. Um, yes, all of those things do have something to do with eventually finding our purpose and one's happiness. Of course it does. But I believe it's also extremely important to do the hard work and the heavy lifting of creating our own chances at success. Or at least, and here I will insert a lawyer pun, at least do the due diligence necessary to make it likely that you'll recognize these chances whenever they do happen your way. Now, um, anyone who knows me knows that I'm not someone who normally employs a lot of sports metaphors, um, but today I want to make an exception and speak to you as the soccer mom that I actually am. I believe you've got to create your own shots on goal. Um, and that right there is some wisdom that I got from our fourth grader who loves the beautiful game and happens to be sitting there in the audience um, and who makes me laugh and appreciate something new every day. And he even agreed to put on a tie today for y'all's graduation. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you who may not be familiar with my book, The Partner Track, you might be thinking, yeah, yeah, great, so it's on Netflix, but what is the story about? 
Well, uh, to use another law school pun, in a nutshell, it is about the American dream. It is about the ties that bind us. It is about the duties that we all owe to ourselves, as well as to our families, our colleagues and teammates, our communities, society in general, and perhaps most importantly, our own personally held values, beliefs, and ethics. I write and think a lot, especially lately, about how factors like history, family, geography, race, gender, privilege, socioeconomic class, access to education, uh, religion, regionality, freedom of expression, and so many other important influences all impact our complicated relationship with things like ambition, success, um, and the pursuit of happiness itself. I am fascinated by group dynamics and how all of this um, plays out in connection with every personal and professional decision we might ever be faced with at any time in our lives. So take me for example, or perhaps my alter ego, Ingrid Young. Like Ingrid, and I suspect perhaps like many of you, I have always been pretty good at following the rules and sticking to the well-trod, well-lit path. And like Ingrid, I'm an Asian American woman and also the first lawyer in my family. I happen to be born in California and raised in Virginia, not very far from here at all, uh, where I entered my local public elementary school, Ravensworth Elementary, as one of only a handful of Asian American kids. And at that time, at least, I could count on one hand the number of other non-white kids in my grade. I went on to attend high school in Alexandria, Virginia, at a uh, public magnet school called the Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. Uh, known as TJ, and I enrolled there at this science and math focused public high school, mainly because I got in, <laughs> even though I knew deep down, even at that point, that what I really wanted to do was to write. With the help of a lot of financial aid, I went to college in Massachusetts, where I double majored in English and political science. And to this day, to be honest, I sometimes wonder whether I kind of decided to add that political science major too, because at least it contains the word science in the name. So in college, my on-campus work-study jobs included shifts at Frost Library, where I pushed the metal cart around and reshelved books, um, and the admissions office, where I learned to lead campus tours, walk backwards, um, and advise and meet with prospective students, and was also a resident advisor to first-year students. And just generally, that was where I first started to learn to find my voice. So when senior year rolled along, and it was time for all of us to figure out what to do about next steps, I looked around and assessed what I thought at that time were my only viable or realistic options. I was the daughter of first-generation immigrant parents who had sacrificed all and left everything behind when they had to flee communist China in a hurry. And as an aside, growing up, my parents were always huge fans of the movie The Sound of Music, but it wasn't until far, far later, when I was significantly older, that I finally realized why. So my parents and grandparents were among the lucky ones with the means, and of course the luck and good timing, to have safely landed in tai Taipei, Taiwan, and then eventually come to the United States, which was their American dream come true. Perhaps it was their Cinderella at the ball moment. So they landed in California, to be exact, where I was lucky enough to be born. My dad somehow got a first job uh, in the dish room at a fancy hotel. But soon he became a language instructor by putting himself in a smart place at a smart time. In other words, my dad made his own luck. And both my parents have always taught me to be extremely thankful for creating our own chances like this and then seizing them. So, in college, as I was there evaluating my career path options, I didn't really feel that moving to New York City to try to express myself as a poet was particularly realistic. Instead, I thought to myself, well, what 
what do I love? What am I passionate about? Well, I love working with words. Words are my passion. I then thought about the parent-approved troika of career paths. Uh, med school, law school, uh, I don't know, the finance, accounting. Um, and among them, I rationalized, well, lawyers work with words, right? Lawyering is all about persuasive arguments, writing and communicating effectively. Um, so law it was. I took the LSAT and I did well enough to get into law schools and I arrived here um, at UVA in the fall of 1995. So then, as I said, California is where I was fortunate enough to be born and Massachusetts and Virginia, right here, are where I was fortunate enough to be educated. Growing up, both my parents, uh, both of whom have been teachers at some point or other, instilled in me a lot of strong ideas and ideals. Chief among them, number one, that we are all very, very fortunate human beings to live in the United States and to be real, live, <laughs> card-carrying Americans with its many freedoms and its rule of law, which is meant to ensure justice for all. And here I, I'd like to mention that my dad happens to be a huge sports fan, especially of soccer and tennis, uh, and the NBA, especially after the whole insanity phenomenon. Um, so I grew up watching my dad always place his hand over his heart uh, and even sometimes tear up whenever our US na national anthem gets played at any sort of stadium or arena before any kind of event. And here's another fact you may not know. In the Mandarin Chinese language, uh, the United States of America is called Mei Guo, just two syllables, Mei Guo, and translated literally, that means the beautiful country. My parents are just about the most authentic and appreciative Americans I think I know. Number two, they also instilled in me at a very early age that the world does not owe me or frankly anyone else a living. One really does need to work hard, make your own opportunities, and be wise enough to recognize them when they do happen along. In other words, it's important to have some sort of plan. <laughs> Third, they always said to me, as I'm now saying to all of you, this talented and resilient class of 2023, remember that good, honest work, intelligence, thoughtfulness, of course, empathy, compassion, the ability to listen as well as to talk, and most of all, kindness will serve all of us extremely well. I think that kindness is a free and perpetually sustainable and renewable resource. This is not a zero-sum game, after all. I believe there is enough kindness to go around. So I want you all to know that in my travels, especially lately, I've been truly impressed and inspired by all of you students, or I should now say new law grads, who are all asking all of the right questions about things like, number one, finding workplaces and workplace cultures with level playing fields where you can not only survive but thrive, and number two, places where you can work alongside not just coworkers, people with whom you happen to randomly share office space, but with real colleagues, meaning the kinds of people who might even become actual lifelong friends and mentors, as I have been lucky enough to find at literally every single place I've ever worked since graduation. I have also been really impressed by all of you students and, and other people that I get to meet and talk with who are all being so extremely thoughtful about how best they can use their particular talents, strengths, experiences, and backgrounds to create meaningful, positive change in the world, even at a time when it can often feel like there's so much uncertainty and so many challenges uh, still to be faced. Whenever people ask me what I wish I'd known back when I was sitting in your seats, graduating from this law school 25 years ago, this, in a nutshell, is what I tell them. I wish I'd known to take more risks sooner and more often. I wish I'd known that most people, including big law partners and other bosses and, and colleagues, are not mind readers. Meaning, if there is something in particular 
that you think you can do and want to do? Then raise your hand, open your mouth, and ask to do it. The worst that can happen is that they could say no. But in my personal experience, a lot of the time, even if they may look a little bit surprised that you're the one who asked, sometimes they do say yes. I also wish I'd known to be less terrified of, of uncertainty and of not being perfect. I wish I'd known that it can be perfectly okay, maybe even a wise idea, to step off the track, capital T, capital T, the track, every once in a while. I want to be clear about what I mean by this. I do not mean that you should not try to reach for every star that you want to reach for. What I mean is, just because you've got the goods, and all of you do, by the way, and just because you can collect yet another gold star on the list, it doesn't mean you always have to. It's so easy to get so used to, and so good at, following all these breadcrumbs. So once in a while, just please remember to stop and make sure that they are leading you somewhere that you really want to go. In conclusion, UVA Law Class of 2023, thank you for inviting me to share some of my thoughts with you today. I truly cannot wait to see and hear and read about all of the things that you're going to accomplish out there, my friends. Dream big and be audacious. I wish all of you all of the best. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Helen. That was wonderful. Uh, it is now my pleasure to recognize some of those who have contributed so much to the law school and our community over the past three years. You will see on the second page of your program the awards that have been previously conferred on members of the class of 2023. These graduates should be so proud of their accomplishments, and we are grateful for the many ways that they have enhanced our community. You will also see a description of the awards that I am going to announce today. The recipients of these awards do not know in advance that they have received them. These awards are given based on the recommendation of the faculty. And we are truly honored to have had these graduates as members of our community over the past three years. One award, the Faculty Award for Academic Excellence, will not be given today. It will be announced over the summer after all of the final grade calculations have been made. If you are a recipient of an award that I announce, please stand to be recognized. Award recipients will receive their awards after they cross the stage to receive their ceremonial scrolls. So for now, it's just stand to be recognized and you can sit back down. All right, first, the Virginia State Bar Family Law Award was established by the Family Law Section of the Virginia State Bar and the Virginia chapter of the American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers. It is presented to the graduating student who has demonstrated the most promise and potential for the practice of family law. The 2023 recipient is Christina Irene Antonucci. The Virginia... <laughs> The Virginia Trial Lawyers Association Trial Advocacy Award is presented to a graduate who shows particular promise in the field of trial advocacy and who intends to take the Virginia Bar. The 2023 recipient is Leah Judith DeFazio. The Epa Hutton IV Memorial Book Award was given by the associates of the law firm now known as Hutton Andrews Kurth in honor of the late Mr. Hutton, class of 1927. The Epa Hutton Award is presented to a graduate who demonstrates unusual aptitude in litigation courses and who shows a keen awareness and understanding of the lawyer's ethical and professional responsibility. The 2023 recipient is Skylar Ray Drifsinski. The Earl K. Shaw Labor Relations Award was established by Mr. Shaw, class of 1934, and is presented to the graduate who shows the greatest promise in the field of labor relations. The 2023 recipient is Anna Marie Beninsky. The 
The Edwin S. Cohen Tax Prize was established by the late Professor Cohen as, and is presented to the graduate who has demonstrated superior scholarship in the tax field. The 2023 recipient is Neil Michael Kelleher. Mr. Kelleher, could you remain standing? Thank you. Mr. Kelleher also receives the John M. Olin Prize in Law and Economics, which is presented to a student who has produced outstanding written work in the field of law and economics. Mr. Kelleher receives the Olin Prize for his paper, Improved Transfer Pricing Litigation by Aligning Section 482 with Litigants Incentives. <laughs> He'll be reading that momentarily to you all. The Mortimer Kaplan Public Service Award was established by Mr. Kaplan, class of 1940, who throughout his lifetime was associated with the law faculty and the law school. The Kaplan Award is presented to a graduate entering a career in the public service sector who demonstrates the qualities of leadership, integrity, and service to others. The 2023 recipient is Mary Sloan Denning Merkel. The pro bono award is presented to the graduate who contributed the most to the law school's pro bono program. The 2023 20 recipient is Kara Sue Haffermals. <laughs> the Herbert Kramer, Herbert Bengal Community Service Award was established by the late Mr. Kramer, class of 1952, and is presented to the graduate who has contributed the most to the community during his or her time in law school. The 2023 recipient is Isaac Kevin Buckley. The LLM Graduation Award is presented by vote of the faculty to an outstanding member or members of the graduating LLM class. There are two awardees this year. They are Augusto Nicolau and Amanda Lauren Staples. The Robert E. Goldston Award for Distinction in the Classroom was established by Mr. Goldston, class of 1940, and is presented by vote of the faculty to the graduate who has contributed the most to classroom education by his or her outstanding recitation and discussion. The 2023 recipient is Amalia Isabel Garcia Pratelt. The Z Society Edgar F. Shannon Award was established by the Z Society to promote outstanding scholarship to the university. The Z Society Shannon Award is presented to the graduate with the highest academic record after five semesters, and the 2023 recipient is Jeffrey Robert Horn. <laughs> Mr. Horn, could you stay standing? Mr. Horn is also a winner of the Roger and Madeline Trainer Prize, which was established by the late Chief Justice Trainer and his wife, and is presented to two graduates who have produced outstanding written work. Mr. Trainer receives one of these awards for his paper in defense of TransUnion LLC versus Ramirez. The Thomas Marshall Miller Prize was established by Emily Miller Danton in honor of her father and is presented by vote of the faculty to an outstanding and deserving member of the graduating class. The 2023 recipient is Laura E. Lowry. The James C. Slaughter Honor Award was established in honor of the late Mr. Slaughter, class of 1951, and is presented by vote of the faculty to an outstanding member of the graduating class. The 2023 recipient is Ilana Ozer. The Margaret G. Hyde Award was established by the late Forrest J. Hyde, Jr., class of 1915, 
and is presented by vote of the faculty to the graduate whose scholarship, character, personality, activities in the affairs of the school, and promise of achievement have entitled him or her to special recognition. The 2023 recipient of the Hyde Award is Dev Priya Ranjan. Please stay standing, Dev. Mr. Runjan also wins the Roger and Madeline Trainer Prize for Outstanding Written Work as the second awardee. Mr. Runjan receives a trainer prize for his paper, Collateral Effects of Habeas Retrogression. Congratulations to all of our award winners. We will now prepare the stage for the presentation of our graduates. I will now call the roll of the graduates. The candidates for the degree of Juris Doctor, James Wyatt Aiken. Monique Shola Alavi. Joe D. Aldridge. Carter Ballantyne Allison. Zane Altimus. Christina Irene Antonucci. Megana A. Apalaraju. Shivani Aramili. Sujata Darshan Bhattracharya. John Paul Barada. Holly Catherine Bard. Lawrence J. Barker. Sierra Nicole Barone. Soraya Batman Gellidge. Kara Jean Bennett. Kendall Elizabeth Bernard. Samuel Collins Blackington. Brian Michael Blaylock.
Ryan Daniel Blum. Anna Marie Beninsky. Camille Victoria Bowler. Paul Richard Bowers. Bridget Boyd. Daniel Ryan Brown. Hunter Andrew Brown. Jack Brown. Amelia Kathleen Browning. Emily Jane Buckholtz. Isaac Kevin Buckley. Kevin Q. Bowie. Kara L. Capacetti. Whitney Carter. Katie Marie Rogers Chacho. Lucas Carl Chacho. Paul Chason. Scott Stephen Chamberlain. Devin Nelson Chanel. Ruby Anila Cherian. McKenna Cherry. Lindsey Grace Kina. Daniel Choi. Elena Youngjean Chu. Christopher Coleman. Marissa Elizabeth Coleman. Ryder A. Capasano. Katarina Madeline Conran. Alex Corleone. Elijah L. Coriel. Thomas R. Coverdale. Emmeline Dickinson Cox. Timothy Wright Crump. Rachel Marie Dalton. Louis Michael Davis. Olivia A. De Silva. Leah Judith DeFazio. Juhi Desai. Christian Diaz Ritz. Sarah Countryman Dickinson. Skyler Ray Drefsinski. Eric Stephen Dunbar. Jordan P. Dunlap. Anna V. Dykes. Julia Joy Egger. Olive Eisdorfer. Christian B. Eakins. Sophia Elise Evans. Laura Patricia Foss. Hilary Faith Finkelstein. Ryan Robert Fitzgerald. Jameson G. Fletcher. 
Trevor Scott Floyd. James Ford. Yawande Samantha Ford. Walker Fortenberry. John Patrick French. Amalia Isabel Garcia Pratel. Monica Garlinska. Austin Junho George. Emily Marie Gerard. Samuel Patrick Gersmeyer. Rahima Gafori. Maxwell Delancey Jacomazzi. Audrey Taya Gibson. Benjamin A. Gilman. Raylissa Michelle Glennon. Joshua A. Goland. Nathaniel Eduardo Gonzalez. Siddhanth Goyle. Caroline Kunster Gosgin. Morgan J. Graff. Julia Rose Grant. Warren Griffiths. Jackson McConaughey Grubb. Sarah Passman Guiney. William Chase Gunter. Kara Sue Haffermalls. Jordan Elizabeth Hahn. Christopher Cody Hamborski. Anna Elise Hamill. Boyd Imbler Reese Hampton. Kaylin Graham Hannes. Sarah Yuko Haney. Caroline Xavier Hardy. Spencer P. Hatery. Natalia Hegwaburo. Stephen A. Higgins, Jr. Theodore James Hoffman. Dylan Haldsworth. Ryan Michael Hollins. Chanel Jacqueline Holmes. William James Holt. Jeffrey Robert Horn. Virginia Perry Johns. Diana Lynn Cabani. Alexandra Marie Casper. Jeremy T. Cass. Neil Michael Kelleher. Parker W. Kelly. Paige Madison Kennett. Layla Khaled. Matthew David Kim. Emma King. David Hutchcraft Kinnaird. Geneva M. Kotler. Rebecca Nicole Kraus. Nishta Manish Kulkarni. 
Morgan Emily Kirst. Ryan Scott Kurdiak. Amanda Louise Cusick. Kara Judith Quirt. Dana Elizabeth Lake. Max Massey L. John Bonham Lawrence. Madison Marie Lazarek. Sarah F. Lazaro. Samuel Williams Lerner. Gregory Lee. Jordan Lee. Megan Shangjen Lee. Probis Leo. Esselina Y. Liang. Brianna Rose Lindbergh. Hayden Allen Little. Daniel Liu. Tristan Daniel Locke. Alexander Andrew Lovin. Laura Lowry. Matthew Laskawa. Dylan Crowdis McDonald. Tyreek Zaire Mack. Douglas Treadway Mags. Aaron May McGoffey. Hamza Malik. Jessica Rachel Mann. Alexander A. Manter. Ross A. Marchand. Rachel Diane Martin. Natalie Margaret Mock. Catherine Sinclair McAvoy. Charles Millard McGrath. Kennedy Elizabeth McGuire. Robert J. McLeod. George McMillan. Kimberly Ann McMillan. Kelly Nicole McQuillan. Mary Sloan Denning Merkel. Katrina Marin Meyer. Jamie Samantha Miller. Kanan Samuel Mills. Lydia Mills. Reagan Josephine Minor. Jacob Allen Mitchell. Christopher M. Moody. Vanessa Rodriguez Moody. Genesis Amara Moore. <laughs> Raphael Patrick Movsesian. <laughs> Julia Jeanette Moroz. <laughs> Bisma K. Mofti. <laughs> Douglas Gilman Mulliken. Lauren Amanda Murtag. Andrew J. Nell. Samira Nematalahi. 
Sanskriti Nyopani. Antonella Nicholas. Andrew Leitner Norman. Harper Adelaide North. Annalise Marie Oliveira. Aspen J. Ono. Ilana M. Oser. Cyrus Ovesi. <laughs> Sabrina Palazzolo. Brian M. Pang. Christina Gia Park. Paul Ignatius Patton. Mason Weiss Pajwak. Marley J. Peters. Jonathan Taylor Peterson. Brecken A. Petty. Sarah Ann Fitzer. Denny Fain. Megan P. Fansalker. Parigna Praveen. Nicholas Connor Preby. Megana Puchilapali. Mita Namani. Dev Priya Runjan. Aziz Rashisada. Ashley Suzanne Reed. Ann G. Reyna. Daniel Wade Richardson. Caroline Jocelyn Riley. Michaela Jean Ryder. Connor Joseph Rooney. Daniela Marie Rosello. Pyle Chandraha Sumpat. Kyle D. Sanchez. Mary Kathleen Sands. Edward Henry Satchel III. Kathleen Blair Schaefer. Brooke Danielle Schaefer. Alexander Robert Schechner. Abigail Marie Shepper. Jennifer S. Scherschel. Molly Schiff. Benjamin Casey Schlichting. Thomas John Schnorr. Steven Renzo Schunk. Jennifer Scholler. Riley Kendrick Seegers. Hunter Sentner. Hunter P. Shaw. Jayla Shiver. Tyler Christopher Shockley. Elizabeth Simper. Christian Carlton Slattery. Ariana Jacqueline Smith. Eric Michael Smith. Helen Song. 
Kara Elizabeth Suto. Samantha Nicole Spindler. Julia Carson Stamper. Sydney Alexis Stanley. Cassidy Taylor Stanton Cox. Caleb Anthony Stevens. Nicholas Stratman. Jolena Ningjing Sun. Sydney Lee Swain. Kurt K. Swalander. Mary Elise Talkington. Michael Robert Testa. Abby Catherine Thompson. Ethan C. Tracy. Jack Turnage. Doyle S. Tuvison. Heath Varnado. Carly K. Wade. Sarah Walsh. Charles Stratton Warden Jr. Annabella Maria Veskovich. Luke Worden. Jenna Elizabeth West. Logan Kimball White. Kevin Charles Whittem. David Wynn Wilson. Emily Marie Wilson. Jordan Sidley Woodliff. David Wu. Yachin E. Shanae Yoon. Mustafa Oyenlade Yusuf Okilijen. Adam Philip Younger. Regina Zen. Richard J. Zero the Third. The candidates for the degree of Master of Law. Reham Isa Zakaria Abdesalem. Takaya Akagi. Masato Amani. Keichi Bando. Leah Elizabeth Berger. Yori Braspenning. Martina Calcaterra. Chen Zhongyu. Mateus Cruz. Shunsuke Fujita. Fernanda Gonsalves Blaga. Si Yu Guo. Kei Hatori. Wei Hua. Chuck Huang. Wei Yu Huang. Federico Ibarra. Miku Isi. Tomoki Kashimura. Maria Fernanda Klinert Rivera. Hiroki Kubo. Ye Ni Lai. Ya Li Leong. 
Tomoyuki Miyasaka. Hirotaka Murase. Augusto Nicolaou. Kensuka Sakajiri. Shoko Sakajiri. Jai Shen. Mayu Shiramizu. Amanda Lauren Staples. Jing Su. Hiroyuki Takahashi. Hatoka Sukamoto. Simon Volkov. Rianne Renee Wentz. Ziahan Su. Da Wei Yi. Ansi Zhuang. Elevin Zhu. The candidates for the degree of Juris Doctor and Masters of Business Administration. Spencer Ray Bankhead. Chad Francis Kenny Jr. Catherine A. Walsh. This concludes the role of the graduates. Congratulations to all of you, graduates, families, and friends alike. To our graduates, along with the certificate that you just received and the official diploma that will follow in the mail, lest you think that was the official one, it's coming, you leave here with a key, not a physical real key, but a metaphysical one, but it's no less significant for that fact. Indeed, I think it is more significant. This is a key to our kingdom. I have told you more than once what a powerful thing the law is, and Juhi told you that as well. The law puts people in prison and gets them out again. It allows for treaties and ends war. It merges companies and allows them to go bankrupt. I hope over the past year or three, you have learned this power of the law, that it is not some constant external foreign thing that exists somewhere out there in a vacuum. It is made, not found. It is made by lawyers who both represent clients and create it. It is made now by you. In a society committed to the rule of law, a legal education is a key to the kingdom. So never underestimate the difference that you, yes, each one of you individually, specifically, are both responsible for and capable of. We have all seen during the last months and years just how big are the challenges facing this nation and our world, and just how much the law can be an instrument of change in ways that you like and in ways that you don't. But I hope you have seen just how critical lawyers are in our constant search to build a more perfect union. So I urge you, be generous with the keys you now hold to this kingdom, the keys to shape the law, and in a truly grand fashion, to shape our economy, our government, and our society. Use those keys for justice, for democracy, and for the rule of law. With these keys in your hands, your careers will take you anywhere and everywhere. Just see where they've taken Helen Wan. Life is long and careers are varied. Alumni are sometimes sheepish to tell me when I see them out on the road that they are no longer practicing law. And I ask them, and I ask you now, never to feel sheepish about where your career takes you. So long as you maintain your integrity, your judgment, and your humanity, 
It is never a failure to grow and change, to find new paths and unplanned avenues. Indeed, those sheepish alumni tell me that no matter what they are doing, what they learned in law school has served them well. And I am confident that that will be your experience too. What we offered when we recruited you to UVA was not only learning, growth, and community for one year or three, maybe two in a bit, I hope, okay, um, but a lifetime of the same. Much as it is hard to believe, your student years are only the beginning of your connection with each other and with this law school. Today, you achieve alumni status, which you will now hold for the rest of your lives. So I welcome you to the ranks of the more than 20,000 other Virginia Law graduates in the world. And as I do so, and though my pride is tinged with wistfulness at your departure, I know that we are saying so long rather than goodbye, because I know that you will come back and visit to guest lecture or teach a class or mentor our students or judge oral arguments or recruit our students to work for you, and of course, to reconnect with each other in the law school at reunions. So as you begin your new adventures, always remember to fall back on and carry with you the education you received here and the friends you made. This degree, these keys to our kingdom, this learning, this model of nobility will serve you always. And this community, these people, and this place will always be here for you. Congratulations.